Hi, my name is Kelly Clarkson, and I feel honored and super cheesy because I love Conan oh, about sure. being Conan O'Brien's friend. Well, that's very sweet. Yeah. Yeah, Thank you very true. much. That's very nice. <laughs> and I will warn you, Kelly, it's apparently not a very sentimental crowd tonight. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's right. I like humor above all. I tried to just bully them into <laughs> saying something romantic. We about will me make they, them cry. That's yeah, the exactly. Do it. Do it. Yeah. You know, I kept talking about this, but I was. I said, I know I've met Kelly, and it was right after yeah. you burst into the world's attention with American Idol. You yeah. came on my late night show, and I watched the clip of it this morning. I did too. And, and I was freaked out. Oh, not me winning, me on your show, sorry. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah, I'm yeah. saying I watched the clip of you coming on my show. Yes, okay, yeah. I only watch things that involve me. And <laughs> they said, don't you wanna see Kelly the night talent. she won? I'm like, no, I'm not in it. Uh, um, <laughs> no in there. <laughs> but they, uh, they showed it to me and uh, my, the first thing that struck me is you are a kid, you're like a child. Yeah. You come out, and then I'm an 11 year old girl in the in this clip. I mean, I am just such. I'm so young too, and I'm like, hey, it's Kelly Clarkson, everybody. And uh, okay, so that's how I felt like my voice sounded. So we we literally, I was telling him earlier, we we Google it because I was like, I know it was like right after Idol, and I was so excited, like in love with him. Like I've like I was very excited. And <laughs> so and, what happened? I mean, so why did what? <laughs> Why does, why does the love no. fade so quickly? No, no. I mean, I mean, just at that moment, I was like, I cannot believe I was so excited to get to do your show. So mm -hmm. I was like, I just it was a huge thing. And I'd never done anything like that. The only thing I'd done is idle, really. Right. So I was very excited. And um, but I we looked it up. I was like, I feel like it was like 2003 ish. And we looked it up, and that that was so it was 20 years ago. Yeah. So we have a date in 20 years <laughs> <laughs> to, to have another interview. We are allowed to speak yeah. to each other once every once 20 every years. 20 years it's allowed um but no but i i had to turn it off because my voice was you hate your own voice like your talking voice like i don't leave voice smells i hate my talking voice oh. you don't wait a minute so to a degree that you don't leave a voicemail i never leave a voicemail how do you That's feel about being on a podcast <laughs> Here's why Here's why I'm okay with this show, and here's why I'm okay with my talk show or any show I do, because I don't watch them or listen to myself back because I'm in it, okay, like yeah. you experienced. Yeah. So I don't ever, we were just actually discussing this. I never watch myself. So for that reason alone, like, do you like your voice when you hear your voice? Nobody really does, right? I am uh, I am not a fan of my voice, but okay. then I talk to other people and they agree that they're also not a fan <laughs> of my voice. <laughs> And I've always thought I do not have a good voice for television or radio, and and that's the medium that I got into. And it, which, which, by the way, reminds me, I have a major bone to pick with you, which is I got into being a talk show host because that's the one thing I could do. Oh, you became a talk show host, and you're really good at it, and you have so many other incredible possibilities, and you're an amazing singer. That enrages me. It just enrages me <laughs> because that was all I could do. No one else was saying, you know, why don't you, do you also have like a 10 octave range? Yeah, but I think I'll just do a talk show. You know, whether you're on a cross country drive or on your daily commute, time in the car is perfect for listening to podcasts like, I don't know, this one. <laughs> T-Mobile covers more highway miles with 5G than anyone. Their network helps keep you connected to all your favorite podcasts when you're out and about. Mm -hmm. I gotta tell you, I like to road trip sometimes. I do too, and I, I have T-Mobile, and I, I can honestly say there's coverage. That's important, like there's been times in my life where I'm out on the road, driving around, and uh, especially on those family trips, you're out in the desert, you wanna make sure you have that coverage. Yeah, what if you get, like your car breaks down, and you're just there. Sitting there like a chump? Yeah. With no coverage? Yeah. <laughs> Not this guy. I've got T-Mobile, got 5G. Find out more at tmobile.com slash C-Y, that's S-E-E-W-H-Y. I have been very vocal about this from the very beginning. Like, I was more shocked than anyone. Like, after doing The Voice, they were like, oh, we like how you are on the show, your energy. Like, we think you'd do great at a talk show. You do it. We, we have this idea. And I was like, oh, thank you, no. Um, oh, you said no initially. Twice, because I was like, I do not think that people will watch. I am not a comedian. Mm -hmm. I am not a journalist. I have no experience to do this. <laughs> like, literally, why would you want me to do this? Like, and so they, they really, my ex actually really pushed me to do it. He was like, I think you'll be really good at it. And I was like, okay. I was like, and so I tried it. And I will say from the pilot, 
I think as long as you're a curious person and you love to engage with people, you love to be communicative, like it's 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 kind of an easy job. Like it's like it's fun. And yeah. it's, you I enjoy would, it. I would say I can I, I sometimes think I can predict who's going to be good at it. And when I heard that you were going to do a show, my first inst instinct was you are a very you're a very warm person and you're a very uh, you seem like a real person. And then I when I bumped into people that work with you regularly, including the woman who did my makeup today, yeah, who Misha. worked in the yeah, yeah, she was just saying she's the best. She's such a nice person. And I think that is half of it is if you can be yourself in front of people and you're a legitimately good person, it's going to work out. And so you have, you I mean, have I think proven if me you right. You are yourself and you're comfortable, then it doesn't really matter. Like, because you don't know. Because I didn't know. Like, people told me afterwards, like, wow, it was successful. Like, that never happens. And I was like, come again. And, then, <laughs> and they were like, oh, this was probably going to fail. And I was like, what? <laughs> but they didn't tell you that I, up front. I had no idea. Like, ignorance was 100% bliss. I had right. no idea that statistically I was screwed. Like it was like I was probably gonna fail. So I was like, if I had known that, maybe I would have said no a third time. No, the only <laughs> way, what happens in show business is they'll kill you with enthusiasm. So what happens is everyone's like, it's gonna be the best. You're gonna be amazing. It's the perfect choice for you. Perfect time. And what they're really audience. thinking is, I don't know. Yeah. If it goes badly, that's their problem. Yeah. Just I'll just cash the check. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, you just, you know, but. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't know. Yeah. It's best yeah. not to know. Yeah. And you just enjoy it and you do it because you like doing it. Yeah. The, um, I'm curious because I want to go way back to. I feel you're, rude. I'm so sorry. Oh, no, no, no. no, no be I, an I, oscillating I, fan. I uh, <laughs> don't need to focus I turn on my this. back on them all the time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> When I'm speaking to them in a room, it's not being recorded. Why I often have my back turned. <laughs> this is the first time we've seen his face. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they're not pleased. No. Yeah. What's interesting to me now is that, you know, American Idol and a bunch of these different singing shows like The Voice, they've become such a regular part of the fabric. I remember very clearly, um, and I was in New York and I was doing the late night show, and I remembered seeing um, an advertisement for this brand new show called American Idol and not knowing what it was and then hearing it's a singing competition show. And like anyone else thinking, well, that'll be around- For 10 minutes. For 10 minutes, yeah. like everything else. Yeah. And I'm always wrong about things. So I, uh, of course it went on to be huge. But what's interesting is your perspective on it as the first person. I I'm just curious to hear you talk about the beginning, the very beginning of American Idol. I know there was some stuff at the very beginning where it almost felt like these people don't really know what they're doing. Like this company doesn't know what they're doing because they're just figuring it out for the first time. Well, because that that there's truth to that because it was they had Pop Idol, which was in the UK. Um, Will Young won the first one and that was kind of the big thing and it blew up there in, in the United Kingdom. And then Simon Fuller was, not Cal, Fuller, mm -hmm. um, was like, oh, I'm going to do this in America and see how it goes over. Well, they weren't sure. And so it blew up and... They didn't really know how to control it. I don't know if right. you've noticed, but geographically speaking, America is enormous compared to the UK. <laughs> so right. covering all that ground and like all the outlets and like all, they, I mean, we were literally someone was always sick with like walking to money or like laryngitis or just that we were over work and not, and not because they were mean about it. Everybody just didn't know. It was a phenomenon. It was just a phenomenon. So it just blew up and everybody was just trying to keep up with it. Right. I heard, so, I heard, I don't know if it's true that that they so, this is the level they were at. They took you guys to a mall, yeah. the contestants to a mall. This is true. And I've heard this and it just sounds, I mean, now you know that they have a whole system because it's become part of the show business firmament and it's this We didn't big have deal. a stylist on the show until I think like the top five, maybe. Right, so yeah. you guys were just doing your own makeup they and hair? They dropped us at a mall. <laughs> the Beverly Center, <laughs> and Ooh, that's gave a rough us, mall. Too. Gave us yeah. gave us money and said, and, and it was like I don't, I think it was like two hundred bucks. I don't even know how. It was just like a couple hundred dollars or something like that. And and said, okay, go go. You know, you this is your you know a prize to go get something like for you know the show. And I am thinking this show is going nowhere. <laughs> I'm pocketing this money. <laughs> I will wear whatever I want. <laughs> I just wore what I had. So what did you? So you? So you didn't even spend the money they the gave money. you? No, I didn't. I was like, this is like rent money. I was like, I'm not going to waste it on this dumb mall. And like, who cares about? I didn't know. No one knew the show would be what it was. I'm literally the first winner. I had no idea. Like, no one knew. Even after I won. 
No one knew. No one could have called that, right? I do think the reason why so many successful people are from that particular show is because they're so invested. Simon Fuller, like with the company, the record company, yep. the management, right. the show, like if one succeeds, all the others succeed. So I yes. think that's the brilliance behind that. Um, and honestly, I had a wonderful time. Like I, I love Simon Fuller. This never happens in the industry, but like he actually let me out of my deal and he didn't have to. And I was, you know, successful. So you, there was no reason to do that, but he actually let me out because he he couldn't actually be there um, it was like other people running it, and it just wasn't a good. Um, that's unheard of in any. He that's not, unheard of in any business, but specifically the music business. For someone to say, "This is a superstar, a yeah. major talent. She wants out. You can go." I was at MTV iced out performing, and I was just in tears on the phone with him, going, "Look, I I love you. You're like the kindest person ever, but like I don't work with you on the regular, and I'm just unhappy with who I am working with." Right. And he not only said he would let me out, he also said he'd help me find management and help me out like after like. And with no with no ask, like nothing, no right. strings. So it's I had a very positive experience in that sense. Right. I will point out he sounds like a terrible businessman. Um. <laughs> he's really loaded. <laughs> so he's doing something right. Once once I was like my friends and I randomly like went like backpacking like um you know in France and he was like literally this is a real story. <laughs> he was like. I, he was like, oh, are you near? And I was like, oh, my God, you're here, too. And he was like, yeah. He was like, I'll send my tender for you. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? I was like, what is it? And this is before the app tender. This is a, a, a boat, I guess a tiny boat with a bigger boat that comes to get you. And I was like, <laughs> Wait, I don't. A boat don't. that contains another boat? It's like, <laughs> it's a tiny boat, I guess, from one big yacht to like come get. And I was like, oh, man, we roll in different circles. <laughs> Wait a minute! You're you back don't have to send your tender. <laughs> you're you're backpacking with your friends, and yeah, it's like we you're just... gonna stay in a youth hostel, and right. then this guy's like, "I'll send my yacht over." <laughs> we were definitely staying at just like a normal hotel, like it was a hospital, but a normal hotel, and I just was like, "Oh my god, you're good!" Like that's not I don't I feel like a pretty woman, like you know, you walk in the store and you don't belong. Um, so I was like, "Oh, this is not this is not how I roll." So no, I'm good, but I learned what a tender was. 